Hey everyone, this is George Carlos with a classic book review. Did you know I got music? It's pretty sweet. I think you've I, upgraded, uh, George. <laughs> All right. I, I actually, you know, I want to do like this little summer book review and go look at some, I don't know, like, I don't know if they say classics. One of the things I really love about some books is one of the things I always think about is, I don't know if you've ever read this book, Dave, is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Have you ever read Absolutely. that? Book, right? Absolutely. So that's, like, that's one of my favorite books ever. And I remember the first time I read it, it was like five, six years ago. I was like, this is such a good book. And then I looked at when it was written. It was like 1930. Like, what the heck? How can a book be so relevant? So I kind of got this idea, you know, over summer. And you're the first one I'm asking to do this. Dave, uh, the owner of DBC Books, uh, who I owe a lot to because he approached me to write Innovator's Mindset, even though he hated me a little bit at the time. Let's be, <laughs> let's be honest. You hated me a little bit at the time, and I don't blame you because I was very hateable to you. They can, they can tune into our first episode for the story. <laughs> so I asked Dave to talk about Teach Like a Pirate, and uh, that book has made a tremendous impact on education. Uh, you don't, I don't know if you know this, but someone tagged me. Uh, I think Edutopia posted this this morning, and they said, like, what's a, a leadership book that everyone should read and should have an impact? And I actually, someone kindly suggested innovators mindset and how much it changed your practice. So I also wanted to see in the other books and teach like a pirate was mentioned several times. I don't know if you actually knew that. Did you know that this morning? I didn't see that. No, it, it was actually just this morning uh, before we actually recorded this podcast. So um, I'm going to ask Dave about teach like a pirate. First of all, uh, this is not one of the main questions, but when, when did you actually write teach like a pirate? Like when, when did that actually come out? So teach like a pirate came out in the fall of 2012. So we're about to hit the 11 year mark for teach like a pirate. That's I feel kind of old now that you said that. It's yeah, really it, been out for 11 years? It has been out for 11 years. That's right. Wow. And that, you know, like, and what's really cool about that, and I remember you kind of telling the story about when you wrote Teach Like a Pirate and you had opportunities to publish it with other people and you kind of wanted to do your own thing. That really, like, Teach Like a Pirate, would you say launch DBC Books? Like, that was kind of the launch? Like, is that how that started? 100%. That was the start of the company. In fact, that was the entire vision of the company at that time is that I didn't want to sign the contract with the traditional company, uh, traditional publishers and form DBC just in order to put out Teach Like a Pirate and then eventually, you know, expanded into doing other books, including, uh, you know, in like Innovators Mindset. But that's how it started. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually remember when we talked about Innovators Mindset, I, I was, I was a little reluctant to write the book because, you know, DBC was very new at the time. And, then uh, I would say like, you're still, you know, it's still not traditional, right? Like it's still not a traditional publishing, uh, company. And I was a little bit, uh, you know, worried that it was not going to reach as many people. And, you know, it's probably reached more people because I wrote with DBC. So I am forever grateful. And by the way, obviously i owe a, a huge debt of, grat a debt of gratitude to dave but he never asked me to do this podcast uh, i actually asked him because i know teach like a pirate has made a tremendous impact so i just want i just wrote down three questions that i want to ask you and i'm doing a series um uh, different books but i wanted to have you on first because many of the people um you know that are, are actually going to be on this podcast some other books that also wrote for dbc some did some didn't and so when you actually wrote teach like a pirate like what, like what inspired you to write it in the first place? Like, why did you get that out to the world? Yeah. So I think what it was, I was doing the workshop for years and years and years. And that's kind of something um, we've talked about this before, where I started doing the Teach Like a Pirate workshop in about 2005 and then was traveling and on the road with it for years and years and years before actually writing the book. And that is something that I think made a big impact and a big difference. And when I think about innovators mindset, I think about the same thing. Like you were keynoting around these concepts of your book and talking and speaking about it and workshopping and doing all these things for a long time and blogging about it before you drew it into a book. Like, so your message had already been out in front of an authentic audience and you had seen what was relevant and what uh, people were picking up on and liking and able to flesh that out. And that was the same thing with Teach Like a Pirate. I had been speaking about it for years, but I knew that I could only go so many places, hmm. but a book can go everywhere. So if I really wanted to amplify my impact, um, I needed to write the book. And then the other thing is, is that people, uh, when they see, they see a speaker, they get excited and they get pumped up. 
but then they walk out of the room and what's really important is do they implement what they saw? Do they, do they take any of those ideas? Like I, I have a, I say inspiration without implementation is a waste. And so don't just inspire me, change my practice. And having somebody be able to watch the keynote or the workshop and then walk away with something in their hands that they're going to be able to go back and use is super important. And I think that's like the same thing is true of your book too. It's like they can see you, they're inspired, but then now they can also like a, a principal can say, I want to, I want my whole staff to read that. I want to implement these ideas. And so that's why I think putting it up to paper is an important step. You know, I, as, as I, you know, one of the reasons I asked you to be on the podcast is because, um, because of how timeless your book has been. And I actually listen to your podcast and it usually comes out. I, I think I get it Monday morning. I think that's when you yeah. release it and kudos to you for podcasting consistently this year. I'm just going to throw that out there. Cause I know, cause oh, I know I'm you had a like sporadic podcast but, before, but I blew it. I blew it last week. What? <laughs> oh man. I, but thank I, you. I, but thank you. That just gave me inspiration to, to get back on the, I'm going to get back onto it. Yeah. And I actually yeah. listened to it and, uh, this wasn't one of the plan questions. One of the things that I, you have a, a, a lot of vulnerability in your podcast. You have some really great guests. I, I actually listen to you when I'm running quite a bit. Like I listen to your podcast and I, I kind of like, I know you very well. We've had a lot of conversations, you know, kind of behind the scenes. And I know, um, I know some of the stories behind your stories when you do your podcast. I'm like, Oh, I know what he's talking about here. Right. And yep. one of the things I liked, and I don't, I, I, I was going to reach out to you about this is you talked about there is this perception that everyone needs to teach the way Dave teaches, right? And everyone has, and I thought you did a really good job of that. And so that is a perception is you want to make everybody the same, but you kind of debunk that. And I know you talk about this in the book and I, I hate this and you, I know you hate it too. A lot of the criticism about that concept is from people who have never read your book. Right. 100%. Yeah, I get, before you, before you answer, yeah. I can tell you this story, Dave. There is this guy who maybe I should be saying this on the podcast. This guy who wrote this whole thing about innovators mindset and just crapped on it. And it was so bad. And I'm like, he, he hasn't even read the book. Like he's crapping on it. And he wrote a whole blog post. And then I said, did you even read the book? He's like, I'll read one. If you send me a copy, I'm like, wait a minute. Like, if you're going to criticize it, like you should know what I wrote, right? Like you're just saying, I said this, but I didn't say it. Cause like you're saying stuff. And so I, I just had to throw that out to it. Cause I, I know that feeling how like frustrating that can be. Like, I get it if you're criticizing some of the concepts, but if you're criticizing before you even read it, that's a totally different thing. And so what did you talk about in that podcast about, you know, cause that's not what you want is you don't want everyone to be clones of Dave, right? Like what did you, how absolutely. Did you so I, I'm always stu I'm stunned by this. It happens over and over again, where someone will make a very sharp and pointed criticism of my book, and what they are saying that is they believe like it's like, like I don't believe in this teach like a pirate stuff. What I believe about education is they will then proceed to say <laughs> exactly what I say in my book. Right. Like I'll say like, oh, it's almost like you're quoting page forty-seven, dude. Like, what are you talking about here? And so like, they'll say like, I don't think that you should teach like a pirate pirate. I think you should take what is unique about you and right. your own strengths and talents and teach in your own way, which will be, <laughs> that'll be most effective with kids. I'm like, right. here's a person who's never read my book. Cause that's exactly what I say in the book. It's just, yeah. it's, but it's, it stuns me how often that happens. Do you like, does that, you know, when I see that too, and I, this is, this is like, and I asked for Dave acoustic jam today. I said for the Dave acoustic jam, cause I just don't have the energy to keep up with the energy that you have all the time. Do you ever like one of the things that really frustrates me about some of that when that happens is it's not that it's because I've dealt with it. It's I know somebody's watching that criticism and they're saying, I'm not putting myself out there. I don't want to go through this. Like, do you ever find yeah. that? That's what bugs me about it, too, is like somebody else who's watching that conversation is like, why would I put myself out there if that's what's going to happen to me? Do you ever feel that? Yeah, absolutely. I see that. I mean, I see it happen all the time. People will tell me that, that yeah. they're, they're not sharing their work yeah. because they don't want to face that kind of scrutiny and that kind of like ridicule. Yeah. And there, and there's, you know, you and I have both talked about this quite a bit. Uh, there's a difference between 
criticism in the sense of elevating versus criticism as opposed to like, I'm better than you. Like there is that, there is that, that kind of bugs me. Now, all that being said, it is timeless. People are still reading it. People are still connecting with it. This is one of the, I wanted to ask you this question because it is one of the hardest questions I get about my book. And I, I struggle with it because just like innovators mindset to me, I know teach like a pirate is, is your baby. Like it's kind of your baby too, right? Like it's, yeah. it's a lot of, be, if you can go back in time and change something about it, like what is something that you would actually change about the book? Yeah. So this is a super tough question. And this is the reason why is because I wanted to write teach like a pirate from a very authentic place of not talking about stuff which I had not done successfully in my classroom. So it is very much a, a set of strategies and ideas and a mindset that I was using in my classroom. And so this is, this is another criticism that um, the book faces, which I actually agree with. Right. People will say, hey, how come, like, how come your book doesn't have more educational technology in it? Or how, I don't see anything in here about project-based learning. Like, yeah. why aren't you writing about, you know, why don't you write more about ed tech? And I say to them very um, point blank, I just say, like, I'll tell you why it's not in there. It's because I wasn't very good at it. Right. And so I could not write from an authentic place about that. Why don't I, why don't I have all of my strategies for project-based learning in there? Because I didn't have effective strategies for project-based learning. These are things that have come along later to me. Like if I could rewrite it now, I would be able to say more about ed tech. I'd be able to say more about project-based learning. I'd be able to say more about some of these things that I've come further with since writing it. But so at the time that I wrote it, it was absolutely my manifesto and a list of things and a set of strategies that I was using effectively in my classroom. And so I wouldn't change anything in it from that point. If I could rewrite it though, it would be a different book mm -hmm. because, and, and that's kind of what the whole publishing company was about is that um, like, I wasn't trying to write the encyclopedia of teaching. Right. I was trying to write my story, Right. but my story isn't the whole story. And so that's why it was super important to be able to, to then move to try to amplify other people's voices, you know, your voice with your um, work with innovation, Matt mm -hmm. Miller's voice with educational technology, like all these other people as well. Well, that, and that, I think that's, um, that's one of the things that I try to explain to people outside of education about, you know, they'll say like, why don't you do this? I said, well, I, I kind of wrote about the concept, but not that thing in particular, but what's really nice is I can expand on some of those ideas, but now with artificial intelligence and chat GPT on my blog. So that it's kind of like, I, I always kind of see them as a connection. And I remember this is actually one of the conversations I had with you when I wrote Innovator's Mindset. I was really struggling with the finality of a book when I was blogging, right? Because like a blog, if you like do something really dumb or you write something, you just delete your blog post, right? And it's gone or you can go back and edit it. But you know, once it's on paper, it might as well be on a stone tablet. That's kind of how I felt. And I was nervous about the finality of it. And do you remember that conversation at all? Do you remember that? I, I remember I, the conversation. I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah I was really struggling. I, I like I'll, I'll I'll actually fill you in because I know you probably had these conversations with 10 million authors, right? Who are nervous about this stuff, right? Kind of nervous about this. And I, I felt that you kind of guided me through that. It was, you know, kind of what I was thinking at the time. But it, it it is also you can. There's some timeless concepts to this as well. But you can always kind of like still have conversation and topics about that because i think with teach like a pirate and innovators mindset one of the things that i i know both you and i were hoping that it wasn't meant to be this is like as you said an encyclopedia of teaching this is meant to start conversations this is yeah. hopefully that you you know take this with your um your, your schools you take it with your districts and you talk about it you don't need to agree with everything we're saying in this but we're hoping it starts a conversation right and i yeah. think i was worried that well george said this and you know he must never think any other way right is that something right. like that a what you absolutely mean? that that totally resonates with me and that rings a bell because it's about i always talk about the, the book is the start of the story it's the start yeah. of the conversation it's not it's not the end. And that's one of the things that we look for and with authors too, is not mm -hmm. somebody who wants to write a book and then go walk away and do something else. It's like yeah. they want to write a book and then they want to connect with their readership. They want to be yeah. an authentic member of those communities that spring up around that message and to be a part of that, be a prolific share in that space. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's something that like you've done so well with the innovators mindset. I mean, you, 
even set up spaces like with yeah. the iMOOCs and things like this, like running the iMOOCs several times through people through these big giant groups of people through the concepts in the book. And I know you'll jump into book studies with districts. Yeah. And um, and I, I do the same thing. I meet on Zoom. You know, anyone who's doing a book study of Teach Like a Pirate to this day, 11 years later, I'm on a Zoom with them and talking mm -hmm. about it. And, you know, sometimes they'll say, hey, I don't know, you probably don't want to do this. There's only like five of us. We're reading the book and we meet in the teacher's lounge after school. I'm like, what? Are, are you kidding me? Of course I want to do it. That's where, it's, that's where it started yeah. everywhere. In every school district where it's taken off, it's a small group of people who have uh, bought into it. And and that that's how it always starts. Yeah, that, sometimes I, when I'm speaking at a conference, someone will say to me, you must be sick to sign these books. I'd be, I'd be way worse off if nobody wanted me to sign the book. That would, yeah. that would suck, right? I, I'll do this all day. Like, what, what a, what an honor and privilege that somebody wants to read your stuff. All right, absolutely. Last question, and I actually, <laughs> I'm a little floored. I'll be honest with you, because I, the last question I have is, why is the book still relevant today? And when you said it's 11 years old, I actually can't even believe it's 11 years old. And I'm like, wow, that's like, that's been a while, right? I guess the innovator's mindset is almost eight years old um, this year as well. So even though you wrote this 11 years ago and, you know, before COVID, before the pandemic, before all uh, so many things, like, why would you say, hey, this is a book if you picked it up today could still, you know, help educators? Yeah, so it's based on evergreen principles. If you look at really the heart of Teach Like a Pirate, it's kind of concentrating on three things. One is passion. So your passion as an educator. One is creativity, how to be more creative. And the other is student engagement strategies. And those are evergreen things. There's always going to be needed for student engagement. Passion is something that's never going away. And the need to be creative in any time and space, creativity now maybe it's with AI, but with then it wasn't, right. whatever it is, creativity is never going away. I mean, that's the same way innovation mm -hmm. and the innovator's mindset is still read today and is completely as relevant as the day you wrote it because mm -hmm. there's always a need to be innovative yeah. and to adapt to a changing landscape. And so those concepts behind Teach Like a Pirate are um, evergreen. Also, the other thing I think it makes it evergreen is the center section of the book, which is really where the teaching strategies are, the engagement strategies, the very backbone of that section are questions, mm -hmm. not answers, they're questions mm -hmm. that then you as a teacher ask about your curriculum and you're obviously gonna be asking them in whatever time period you're living in at that point, right? And so it's super important. Like to me, questions are the key to creativity. Like if you want to change the teacher's classroom, change their questions that they ask when they're designing and thinking about how they're going to pull their lessons together. And so the centerpiece of the whole Teach Like a Pirate, the most practical section of the book, 170 questions. Hmm. And so those questions are what I think also makes it evergreen. Um, yeah. So I, I think, and, and it, I don't know if we've ever talked about this, but I think there's a secret recipe or secret formula inside of Teach Like a Pirate that people maybe haven't picked up on it's really a personal development book disguised as an education mm. book right big sections of you mentioned dale carnegie dale carnegie yeah. is quoted in the book um talking about the importance of using people's names and like dale carnegie and how to win friends and yeah. influence people said the the sound of your name is the sweetest sound that anyone yeah. ever hears right yeah. that you know i quoted that in the book uh all, lots of old like uh napoleon hill from Think and Grow Rich, yeah. principles yeah. of the like the mastermind principle that he talks about um, in the book. And so there's lots of evergreen personal development, self-help style, success literature that is sprinkled throughout the book. In fact, the whole last section of the book is about how to overcome obstacles, how to get over the perfectionism, fear of failure, fear of criticism or ridicule, lack of focus, all the things that are gonna hold somebody back from trying to implement new ideas that's almost like a personal development section of the book wrapped inside of an education book. You know, and you know, like that, I think the, when you, when I see it, it's still like, we're recording this on July 13th in 2023 and people are still referencing it. I want to personally thank you because I know if he's like a pirate wouldn't have been written, then a whole bunch of other books, including my own wouldn't have been written. And you know, when I was doing that, I was still working in a school district. And I think the perception and a lot of the people that have written for you are teachers, are principals, 
they're not they and you kind of always perceived an education only people outside of education at the time will write these books and researchers and things like this and you people don't know the story about me but i was offered to write innovators mindset um with someone else and basically they wanted me to change my voice to fit more of a academic style type of book and i think there's an awesome space for that but that's just not my style that's not how i blog that's not how i write and you really encouraged me to just be myself and and share my own voice so that's one of the things i always appreciated about um you and your work and teach like a pirate is that it it was kind of a, a an opportunity for you to spread your passion uh, with so many others. So I personally thank you for, for that, because I know that it's made a huge impact on my life, that opportunity, because I didn't see myself ever doing that type of work. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And I mean, the innovators mindset is, I mean, it's one of the cornerstones of our company and one of the, the most successful books we've ever published. And so it's an honor to publish it and just to see the impact that it continues to have in the world is amazing. Who, who would ever thought you would ever even talk buddy? <laughs> yeah, Exactly. <laughs> you, have to, you have to find one of my old episodes so you can hear yeah, you gotta, okay when i first it. met but i'm not going to tell it again because i'm always embarrassed by it but I, i'm but it, so glad that even in the worst situation we became good friends yeah and that, i mean that is one of the core principles behind dbc is elevating the practitioners yeah and trying totally. to you know get it's eliminating gatekeepers and elevate practitioners people that are actually out there doing this stuff in real schools real classrooms with real kids real staff yeah, I love it. And Dave, so hey, everyone listen, you're going to check out Teach Like a Pirate. It is in the description down below. Dave, I would just, I actually, maybe I just did this podcast because I just forced you to hang out with me for a little bit today. So I'm, I'm glad. And uh, let's get back podcasting, buddy. I need some running material. That's right. All right, Monday. You're going to see it Monday. It's coming out. All right. That is an epic book review. Here we go. Get the, the outro music, man. Oh, epic. I love it. Teach Like a Pirate. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Dave, thanks for being on. I hope you have a wonderful day. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on.